All right, so in this video, I want to take a look at this small space heater. First, a couple of images gives you a little more detail about this. Then we'll jump into some of the other details and talk a little bit more about it. Alright, so as stated, we're taking a look at this little heater. I really love this blue color. Um, it has a metal grill. It's plastic housing on the bottom. It has a little kill switch. That's your tip over protection. So if it's not sitting on a surface and flat and it happens to be tipped over or falls, um, it's going to shut off. So that's really cool. There's a little LED indicator light right here. You have a adjustment knob, sort of a low to high adjustment knob. Honestly, I can't, other than, you hear this? So that's an on and off. Other than that, I don't really notice any difference really from being low to high. So I don't really, I can't discern any kind of difference. I'm not saying there isn't one. I can't tell. I don't hear it and I don't feel it. I just don't notice a difference in this. So I'm not really too worried about that though. I mean, I really just want it to, you know, be able to do what it does and it does work for what I need it for. On this side over here, well, here's the back side. But over here you have a switch, four different positions. So right now it's in the off position. Then it's got fan. So if you just want to have a little bit of a cool air circulating in a small area, great. If you want low heat, fine high heat fine so off fan low high all right turn that back and then of course you have your power cord with this massive warning label things like unplug when not in use don't put it under carpet because of course you can get wear and tear in the cord over time that you wouldn't see that's a potential uh, fire hazard um, the cord itself is right at six feet long so you have plenty of room to figure out where you want to put this. So this is really obviously ideal. It's not going to replace any type of uh, central heating and air by any means, but it can definitely supplement in like a small office environment, whether it's on a desk or under a desk, especially under a desk, because they tend to be somewhat enclosed. Um, obviously you want to give a little bit of breathing room, which is also detailed in the user manual. Uh, the box that it comes in, nothing, you know, too, uh, too much going on over there so we'll leave that over there but uh, yeah the user manual outlines uh, of course some other things that you you know wouldn't want to do like well obviously you wouldn't want to get it wet or have it near curtains or you know having kids around and playing with it you know, just common sense is what it comes down to but there's a user manual here in case you need it um, I'll set that over there so this thing gets as warm as about 122 degrees. I believe it says the range is 95 to 122 degrees. And it, I've got it actually up here. It's a ceramic heating element as far as the uh, heating elements. So those tend to be you know, fairly safe. So that's pretty cool. Uh, flame retardant as far as the actual plastic. So it shouldn't deform or melt or anything like that. I don't run these for extended periods of time because I don't generally have... Uh, super cold areas that I need but I do get a little cool sometimes so it's nice to have it like I said near your feet that's primarily what I think it's useful for uh, sound wise it's right in the neighborhood of 45 50 decibels so it shouldn't be too awful loud I'll try to give you some idea it's gonna be hard to convey that over you know speakers on the you know um, over camera over you know video in this way but maybe it'll give you some idea so let me plug it up all right so I'm going to hold it right here. I'm actually going to hold the switch down so you can hear. And it's off. I'm going to turn it to fan. And right now this is in the off position.
and of course it doesn't matter too much about the fan but as soon as you let go it's going to shut it off and so that quill switch works really well now this is at the maximum level as far as this knob if I turn it back you hear that click so the click basically turns it off even though it's still in the on position for the fan but again that's wide open that's maximum that's off so I'm going to just barely turn it alright so that's right after it clicks you hear it I'm going to ramp it up to full I hear and feel no difference and it puts out air it's not going to put air across the room like my Vornado over there which you can feel clear across the room but you can also see the indicator light changes when the tip over um, so that light right there goes off and on depending upon now if I turn it to low heat sounds the same to me I turn it all the way down it's going to click that's the lowest and if I turn it on high as far as you know temperature heat wise it's already getting quite warm that's max it clicked it's off so barely touch it again that's back on again. Actually feels quite good. That's back to max. That's letting go of the kill switch. Alright, now the reason I'm holding it right here is because one, I want it to be really close to the actual mic. Two, because I don't have any outlets over here in this area. And you need to have this plugged directly into a wall. You don't really you know, want to use extension cords and things like that. And that's the only option I would have over here. So I don't want to utilize my little extension uh, type uh, surge protector, power strip, whatever you want to call it. I don't want to use that because it does warn against that. And because this thing goes up to 1500 watts of power, and that's a lot of uh, power to be pulling off of a unit like that. It may or may not be rated to handle that. So that could be a problem. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Let me set this down. Now the only thing it doesn't have is a little handle on the top or on the back side so you can't you know pick it up and grab it very easily um, i think some people might like it better if the controls were like here and here on the top instead of on each side but overall i mean it does seem to work really well uh, it does state that you may want to run it on the highest possible setting uh, as far as heat and everything for about two hours before you really like put it into its uh, whatever the intended environment you plan to use it because that will get rid of any type of smells because a lot of times these heaters you'll smell the plastics and all that and the, and the metal different things inside um, and the element and everything as it burns off any type of uh, there could be some oil during manufacturing or whatever it is you know during the manufacturing process that accumulates on the device I didn't really notice any kind of smells. Uh, some people may be more sensitive or maybe some units will smell, some won't. I didn't really notice any problems with this one. I didn't get any kind of smells and it heats up within a very short time. I think it's something like three seconds or something to get to 95 degrees. I didn't time it, but within definitely in less than a minute or just a few seconds it was running there. Um, it was already starting to get quite warm. Uh, the metal on the front is still just mildly warm. so. But the outside stays pretty cool and, you know, I don't run it for like super long periods again. 1500 watts is a lot to be running uh, when you don't really need it, you know, constantly unless you're in a really cold environment. So your mileage may vary on what the efficiency and power uh, draw is as far as, uh, you know, the power bill and how that's going to affect it. But for me, for those occasional times to knock that initial cold off in a room before the central heating uh, when I first come home or something like that in the little office area, it's a really nice little heater to have and it works great in like a small bathroom because I have a very large bathroom that has a large heater and a small bathroom so this works really well for that you know just jumping in the shower and uh, having this you know set far enough away that you don't have to deal with a, a huge amount of humidity that's something you definitely want to take into account and not put uh, too much um, 
too much humidity in an environment with any kind of little heaters of any sort really uh, there's a potential danger I'm sure involved in that but for quick showers where you're not going to build up a huge amount of humidity you need to just warm up uh, so you want to step out of a cold shower something like this works great in a small room but anyway that's it I'll leave a link below you can find out more about it check out anything else maybe I didn't miss and um, you just see what you think okay that's pretty much it thanks for watching